Hi, I'm Ryan from Monster Logo Studios. It's been a while. I think we have some catching up to do. I recently purchased a Woove box from Pocket Animal Audio, but I've been sitting on it until I had time to put this video together. I wanted to do a proper unzipping video because that's way more fun than just a regular unboxing. So let's take a look. The Woove box was announced back in August and demand quickly depleted the supply. I was skeptical at first. There are obvious comparisons to the pocket operators which are fun but they can be difficult to really produce on without a bunch of ancillary gear. And I didn't see how something so simple looking could possibly deliver on all it promised. After watching the user community expand over the past month and hearing what they've been able to compose, I was excited to get an alert about a late October stock update and placed an order as soon as they were available. My unit took about a week and a half to arrive stateside, which isn't too bad considering the journey from its Australian origin. In the box, we have a sticker and some simple printed instructions, though I'd strongly recommend getting familiar with the support section of the website, which I'll cover more in depth later. And the device itself. The case has a nice foam insert that gently cradles the single large encoder and provides ample room for the breakout cable to be stored along with it. I was initially taken aback by just how small this thing is. Barely thicker than the USB-C charging and data port on the left side. On the right side, there's a single 3.5mm TRRS output for audio and sync pulse. And on the back, there are 3.5mm connections for both MIDI out and line input. If you're wondering about MIDI in, there's not much here, other than accepting basic start and stop commands over Bluetooth, but I honestly don't think you'll miss it. There's so much else going on in this little package. The Woof Box is definitely punching above its weight class. It has 16 total tracks, one dedicated chord track, and 15 multi-use paraphonic synth or mono sample tracks. There are multiple synthesis engines with two oscillators each, multiple LFOs for pitch, amplitude, and filter modulation, reverb, delay, and chorus effect sends, side chaining, dynamic control, and per voice distortion, saturation, and bit crushing. The sampler allows a total of 62 seconds at 44, 1, and 8 bits, and samples can be managed over Bluetooth or USB-C, and the Woovebox has all the standard mangling, chopping, one-shot, and looping capabilities you would expect from a full-featured sample engine. The sequencer is part of a pretty intuitive song mode, which allows you to store 16 songs on device, each with 16 patterns per track. Each pattern can have a maximum of 16 steps, but you can adjust the scale of each step and chain them together for longer sequences. The sequencer definitely feels like the least mature feature of the device, but the fragment approach to song structuring allows you to get the most out of your arrangements by allowing up to 99 fragments per song, where each fragment controls which patterns on which tracks are playing and for how many steps or bars they'll be repeated. I'd still like to see an option for longer pattern lengths. You can quickly eat up all of your available 16 patterns with a simple lead melody, but I trust we'll continue to see these features evolve over time, especially for a device that's still so early in its life cycle. I still haven't talked about the Woove Connect app that runs in browser and allows you to manage songs, samples, patches, and firmware updates, but I honestly haven't had much time to play with it, so I'll save that deep dive for another video. With all the specifics out of the way, let me show you how it sounds. Here are a couple of quick demo tracks I put together while exploring the basics.
I'm only scratching the surface here, but so far I'm pretty impressed with what this little device can do. Those demos were all put together using the synthesis engines with minimal preset adjustments. I still haven't dug into the sampler yet, there's just so much here. It's both a blessing and a curse. I appreciate how much has been crammed into a device small enough to fit behind my pocket protector, but accessing all of these features relies on a sometimes difficult to navigate series of key combinations and context menus. The segmented screen is tiny and sometimes the acronyms are a little unintuitive. I found myself spending a lot of time going back and forth between the support documentation and the device itself just to figure out what each string of characters meant in the context of the different pages. I'm considering putting together a master key to use as a quick reference guide. Most of the features are familiar if you've spent any time working with other synthesis platforms. The hard part is just knowing which one you're adjusting at any particular time. The sequencer can also be a bit difficult to program. It took quite a bit of effort to lay in simple melody across four different patterns. I found myself first putting the notes where they should belong, which isn't too difficult, but then having to hold each one for an awkwardly long period of time while scrolling through a bunch of different parameters to set correct pitch, volume, and note length. It's not an unfamiliar workflow if you've spent time with any of the pocket operators, but the problem is multiplied here due to the greater number of available parameters. I also found the encoder to be a bit temperamental. Sometimes it would jump 20 or 30 values while I was just trying to move it incrementally, and other times the action would time out without registering my inputs. I'm not sure if it means I have a faulty unit, and I'd be curious to know if anyone else has similar issues. I also really wish there was a more capable MIDI input. The chord track is actually pretty great, allowing for control of not only the chord type, but also letting you select from one of many inversions. And I could see this being an excellent companion device for something like the DigiTact, where you're just looking for some additional augmented synthesis capability on a device that's a bit easier to program. Overall though, considering the price, portability, and the capability here, there's really not much to complain about. I have a trip coming up soon and I plan to spend a bit more time exploring some of these other features. I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you're interested in picking up a Woovebox of your own, I'll leave a link in the description. I'm Ryan from Monster Logo Studios, thanks for watching, I'll talk to you soon.